Hello, hello, hello. This is Priscilla, and I help you live the dream through travel. Well, there was a bit of a snafu today, um, a combination of technical issues and a combination of memory issues. I had a lot going on. My retirement date is set for May 30, so a lot has been going on. Um, in the world of Scylla travel. So very soon I will be doing travel full time. And um, I'll probably be, be doing these lives earlier in the day. We'll I'll do a poll and see. But in any event, you get the replay. So this is um, day four in our four day series. So you sh if you registered, you'll get the replay. Glad to have you. And if you have any comments or questions, make sure that you ask them in the comment section and I will answer them. So thank you. Thank you for coming today. My name is Priscilla with Silla Travel and I help you live the dream through travel. I provide premium planning and travel advisory services for empty nesters in the second act of their lives. So yes, that is definitely me and my husband. We're in our second act. So today is Leon, the crossroads of resistance and renaissance. Okay, so in, we're going to start with an introduction to Leon, France. Leon, France is a south or more southern than um, Paris, but it's way more north than um the Mediterranean. So that'll be the last stop on this journey um, for next year's 2025 soulful Epicurean experience starting in Arles, France and Black Heritage Tours in Marseille and some other Black Heritage and History sprinkled along the Rhone River as we sail from the Rhone all the way up to Lyon, where we disembark and take our trip farther for three days in Paris. So this is the opposite of this year's, because this year starts in Paris and then sail, then we take the rail to Lyon, then sail from Lyon to the Mediterranean. Arl. So river cruise ships go both ways. You can go up one way is one trip, and then back down the other is a second trip. So you either embark on one or the other, either from, uh, in this case, from uh, Marseille to Lyon or Lyon to Marseille or Arl. But river cruising, um, is a nice way to travel and explore Europe. So there are many, many other uh, river cruises that are available for you to take. If you're interested, just reach out to me. I am going to put my um, email address and website in the chat. So that's travel.com. that's my website. And, um, you should still see it on the ticker. My email is agent at solotravel.com. And there you go. Now, we're going to move on. An introduction to Leon. So, Leon is a city that's been around forever. Okay. Uh, Leon started out as a Roman city and it was named Lugdunum. And um, for the Romans, it was of strategic importance because it was where the Rhone and the Sone rivers like converged. So um, remember now, before all of our modern transportation methods and mechanisms, rivers were the way to transport goods from country to country. So the rivers were the highways. So now they're not so much highways anymore. They're for leisure. So the ocean cruises take you to destinations and river cruises take you through them. Okay, so back to the Roman city. Um, this is just an image of the theater of Fouvier that's located in the Lyon city center. 
Now I've been in Lyon and I didn't see that. I went to the old city, but if I would have stayed longer, I'm sure I would have seen it. But of course, I went shopping. So, all right. So now we move on to World War II. Lyon has a significant history for wartime. Uh, during the French resistance during World War II, this guy here, his name was, was Jean or Jean Moulin. Okay. Now he was the organizer of the French resistance groups. Um, and he was commissioned by General Charles de Gaulle. Yes, that's who they named the Paris, the main Paris airport after Charles de Gaulle. Well, this guy, Jean Moulin, he was the starter or the father of the French resistance. And um, he ran it out of a suburb of Lyon. And um, something very tragic happened with him. Uh, the Nazis had occupied France. They had they occupied Paris, which was traumatic to the French. This was the second time because World War I, they occupied um, Paris. And it was the Allies who helped free them. African-American troops with them were major and of a major influence doing that during that time. And of course they brought jazz. Now we're talking World War II. So they're occupied again. Leon was like a working man city. It's also the gastronomy capital of, the, of Fa France. They say the world, but it's the gastronomy capital of France. Okay, so this guy, got picked up by the Gestapo, right, during World War II, because he was the leader of the resistance. He formed it, actually organized it. Many resistance groups came out from his leadership and him starting it up. Uh, he was captured by the Gestapo, but he and he was tortured, and he did not survive that torture. Uh, the Nazis were very, they wanted to create this reputation of brutality in which they absolutely did. Uh, they tortured him and the head guy was named Klaus Barbie. They used to call him the butcher. He was the head of the Gestapo in Lyon during the time. So um, Jean Moulin did not survive his time in captivity and he passed away. Now, we have another character who was a part of the French resistance, and I've talked about her before. She has um, contributed so much to French culture and history, and it's Josephine Baker. And you can see in this picture, she's in uniform because she was a lieutenant in the French Secret Service. So like I mentioned before with um, Mr. Uh, Jean, uh, he started the resistance. He was in Lyon. Uh, Josephine Baker did leave Paris once the um, Nazis came because the environment became very dangerous for African-Americans or any Af person of African descent to stay there. So many of them either went back to the United States or they went to other cities in France. Now, she had a chateau in France, but um, she was an artist, you know, a performer, a famous performer. And so she had the opportunity to use that profession to aid her activities. She uh, participated in clandestine activities and intelligence because she passed information between the French resistance to the allies, which was the United States, France, and England. Um, I'm sure there were more, but those are the main three who were part of that coalition. Um, so Leon was a hub of, of this clandestine sort of like activities, and they were defying the Nazi occupation. And um, she was actually honored at, um, at the French Pantheon in 2021 by President Macron. So she's a, she's a hero. That's where they bury the French heroes. Of course, it was posthumously. It wasn't um, immediately. Okay, so here we go. Leon was also the center of revolt they, and resistance. They had the silk workers revolt. 
So um, Leon is known for making silk. And as you can see, that's a picture of a silk shop that I visited and uh, in Leon, where they actually still make silk and make cartons, ties, clothing um, out of silk the old fashioned way with a loom. With a loom, y'all. They make the silk using a loom. So I do have a video out on my website. If you go to my website at www.sillatravel.com, and uh, if you go there, there is a photo gallery. Okay. So if you go there, you can see many of the photos and videos that I took when I was in France. So the silk workers, they engaged in strikes. They also engaged in acts of sabotage. Um, and they disrupted the German operations by doing that. And um, they definitely supported French resistance efforts there. So they were known for resistance. Now, here we go to um, Ch the Chasselet Massacre. Now, Chasselet is known for being a wine region. But during World War II, there was some horrific events that occurred. These are the Trailleurs Senegalais. Senegalais. I know I'm pronouncing it wrong, but these are the Senegalese troops. Now, this unit was formed before World War I, and um, by Senegal was a colony at that time. So they were former French. They were troops supporting the former French colonies of Senegal. That's when Senegal was a colony and it, they were still a colony during World War II. So during World War I and World War II, they were actually part active participants and they distinguished themselves mightily. During World War I, they had a reputation. So the um, they basically terrorized uh, the German troops during World War I and so did the black troop units um, from the United States. So during this war, they still had that in their memory. So unfortunately, even though it was many, many decades later, they took that out on these troops during their invasion. So on June 19th through the 20th of 1940, these African soldiers surrendered near the French city of Lyon. Um, so they were supposed they were during the Geneva Convention, you're supposed to take prisoners of war. You're not supposed to slaughter them. But that's not what happened. The Nazis massacred at least 40 of these men after they surrendered. And uh, they regarded these men as, um, you know, not fully human, which is why they did that. Because they only did that to the black soldiers. Uh, they didn't consider them human at all. So, um the, that was the Chasselet massacre outside of Lyon, and this these are the Senegalese troops. And this is the Tata Senegalais. This is this is a monument at Chasselet that was made just for these men who were slaughtered there. The French did this. Now the Germans didn't do the slaughtering. It was the Nazis who did that during World War II. But this is where these men um, were buried, or at least they have markers there for them in this area. And this is also, this place is also one of the tours on our trip. Uh, now, here we move on to the U.S. Black troop. excuse me, Black troops. So we have the 333rd Field Artillery Battalion. Now, these guys were manning 155 millimeter howitzers. And uh, during a battle, these gunners basically sacrificed themselves to defend the fleeing infantry. So they were abandoned. 11 of them were murdered by the Waffen SS. And then the United States military forgot about them until later. But the French didn't. There's a monument in France for them. Now, here we go to the gastronomy capital of France. Lyon is the gastronomy capital. 
and boy is it. So um, there are many markets in um, France, in Lyon, France, as a matter of fact, indoor markets. They're like gourmet indoor markets. I visited two, <laughs> two different tours. So um, the Highest de Lyon by Paul Bocuse. He's a famous French chef and he's got this market. And when you go into this market, it is lovely. So all of there are all of these different gourmet booths, gourmet grocery store. And boy, does their food look so good when you go in France, when you go to France, just the way the food tastes. It's just fresh and it looks beautiful. And um, they've got all sorts of food that you could taste. So this, there's, this is one of the places where there's a taste of um, Leon at um, the Paul Bocuse market. And there's pastry, shellfish, sausage, cheese, wine, fruit, vegetables, all, all sorts of French dishes made right there. And there are different um, gourmet uh, sellers there, as a matter of fact. You can eat from a number of them. And uh, here, then we're going to move on to the Chasselet, the taste of Chasselet, because we talked about um, what happened during to the um, Senegalese troops near, right outside of uh, Lyon in the Chasselet area. Chasselet is outside of Lyon. Chasselet is a place where there are lots and lots of vineyards, right? So this is where the Beaujolais wine tasting is. The taste of Chasselet and Beaujolais are here. So there is a tour for that. Next, we're going to move on to the trip, the Good Life and Some Soul Epicurean Experience. So this is a French river cruise, three nights in Paris. It's a, uh, excuse me, through seven day river cruise with three nights in Paris on the end for 2025. It's special emphasis on black culture where there's an optional three nights in Barcelona. So here are the features of the trip, Black Paris and history tours, the Marseille Black History and Culture tours. There will be jazz performances. There's also a seven night um, all-inclusive luxury river cruise. So we know about that with three nights in Paris. All the tours and excursions are included as well as all the wine and spirits. And there's a daily sip and sail cocktail hour with the cruise manager. There's gourmet dining. There's a chef's table restaurant and a captain's table. You get to choose which one you want to um, attend. There's no extra charge for it. There are also active tours for biking and hiking. And we get an opportunity to experience France's high-speed train from Paris to Lyon. And if you book your air through Ama Waterways, you get a complimentary uh, airport transfer with the purchase of air. Now, you don't have to purchase your air through Ama Waterways. However, if you purchase your air on your own, then the complimentary transfers are not applicable. It's only if you buy through Ama Waterways. And Ama Waterways has some competitive rates for air. And uh, there's also a promotion going on on specific sailings. Um, at a specific times where the ha, we have rates at um, economy starting at $8.99 per person. So be sure to ask about that. Um, the best thing about it is you get to unpack once and visit many towns and cities. And in many cases, it's countries for other river cruises. So I'm just going to go over the cruise, actually, where we're going to start in 2025. I'm going to start in Arles, and we're going to embark right there. This is just an image of a Roman Colosseum in the middle of the city. So there's a huge Roman footprint in France. Huge. So that, you would think you were in another, in Italy or somewhere, but no, this is France. That's where the ship embarks where we leave um, from once you fly into Marseille Airport. Uh, transfer to the ship in Arles, and then the following day comes the tours. This is a this is the Ama Cristina River Cruise ship. 
and uh, it, it's a beautiful ship. Um, it houses up to 174 passengers, um, no more than 194 people altogether. And you never lose sight of land. All cabins are, are um, there are no inside cabins, let me put it that way. This is what the rooms look like. This is cabin BB with the French balcony and the outside balcony. Uh, there are some with just the French balcony, and then there are some that just have the window. So um, if you go to the booking page, you can absolutely see a map of the ship and what the rooms look like in addition to the prices. That is just um, what my room looked like. Um, and I was actually outside of Avignon. So I had a double balcony, one with the French balcony where the chair is, and then the step out balcony on the right. I spent most of my time in the French balcony, right by the TV, because all I had to do was open those French doors and the air would come right in. I didn't need to step out. There's also a pool on this ship. There are three decks. And um, on the very top deck, top of the ship, that's where the pool is. There's also exercise activities that are conducted up there. So if you are an exercise enthusiast um, and you would like to get up and do exercise, there is a fitness instructor who comes along on this tour. This is the dining area, beautiful dining area, beautiful seating, gourmet meals. I cannot express that to you. The food was delicious, gourmet meals. All of the meals are included and all of the drinks are included with the cruise fare. Everything's included, the internet's included. Uh, you get a, um, a Mac uh, book in your room. Uh, you get water, you get, I, I mentioned all of the drinks are included, all of your meals are included while you're sailing. There's also a fitness room if you really want to get on the treadmill. Um, but for river cruising, you'll be mostly quite active on the tours from the time you start. So this is just a map of the tour. We'll start at the bottom part where the Ama Waterways logo is, that is the Mediterranean Sea. And you'll see at the bottom, the first dot is Carmage. The second is Arles, that is where the ship is. Marseille is not on this, this uh, map, but it is obviously within driving distance to Arles. Where the red dot is, is where the tour starts. And um, where the purple dot at the top is Lyon, that's where it ends. And then we take the train farther north to Paris. But all these stops all along between um, Arles and Lyon, you'll see all these little stops. There are tours all along the way. And there's um, some Black heritage and African heritage sprinkled all throughout the tour. And jazz is also incorporated into this tour because, of course, the African-American soldiers or troops from World War I introduced the French to jazz. So now it's a part of French culture. And they have lots of uh, jazz festivals throughout the year. So when we start, the first tour in 2025 is going to be the Marseille Black Heritage Tours. So the, this is a specialty tour. And um, this specialty tour will um, explore um, some of the neighborhoods in Marseille. Uh, it will also explore where um, the Count of Monte Cristo was imagined or taken, the setting for the book, The Count of Monte Cristo by um, Alexandre Dumas, um, who wrote The Three Musketeers and many other books, but that was famous and so was um, The Count of Monte Cristo. And he wrote that book off of the life of his father, um, who was the black general, right? And um, he was in prison there for a time um, at the prison. So uh, that's in Marseille. 
part of the Black Heritage Tours. And then we'll move on to Avignon, where there's um, a taste of Avignon. There's food festivals there. There are jazz festivals there. And there's also the Papal Palace. So how many of you knew that there was a uh, papacy or a pope residing in Avignon, France, for a time? So for about 77 years, there was one. Um, of course, when he died, it went back to Rome because he didn't want to move to Rome because of all the politics. Plus, he was a French royalty or nobility, right? So he didn't want to actually, he was elected as the Pope, but he was still in the lineup as a person who could inherit the throne. He didn't want to go to um, Italy at the time, Rome at the time, because of the intrigue. And there was some things going on and he was felt safer. And plus, they just wanted to move it to France to make it convenient for him. But when he died, it moved back to Italy. So it created something called a schism in France between um, the Roman Catholic Church and another shoot off in France. So many people were um, called heretics because they didn't believe the doctrine of Catholicism, similar to the Protestant Reformation and many other um, Protestant offshoots out of Catholicism throughout Europe. Many of them had to flee Europe and come to the United States. So this is just uh, a steam train ride that's on the way. It goes through a gorge. Um, it's an old steam train they just refurbished. And because it was actually a real steam train during World War II, uh, before that steam train was built in the Alps, there was no way down except by donkey. So they built the steam train ride to support the war effort during World War II in the factories in the Alps. So um, the steam train, they refurbished it, and now it's the tourist attraction. It goes through this gorgeous gorge. Beautiful. It's a pretty cool trip. And it's also in the area of Vienne on that map that I showed you. And the Hermitage, which is a um, winery and monastery run by monks. They made wine. And they still make wine the way that they did hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of years ago. Then we go on to Lyon, France, where we will disembark from our seven-day river cruise. We'll disembark in Lyon and take advantage of a Beaujolais wine tasting. Same place as the Châtelet area. Uh, there's also on this tour a jazz and wine experience. So um, it's a, over a year out. So all of the tours, times and the specific tours are not final yet, but this is definitely one of the experience that's, experiences that's incorporated into this tour. There's also an evening red wine and chocolate tasting. This is another um, opportunity because this is baked in or cooked into the culture there in France. Um, Let's see, then we take the high-speed rail and travel to Paris. It's a pretty cool experience, pretty cool. And Paris is our destination. Now, we'll check in at the Renaissance Arc de Triomphe Hotel or similar. It's actually located near the real Arc de Triomphe shopping and public transportation it's located sent near everything so um it's actually a marriott property so if you've got marriott bonvoy rewards or points you can get them for staying at this um hotel which i remember that i'm going to accumulate my uh, marriott bonvoy points this is what that there are spacious rooms in this hotel this is a city hotel. Yep, the rooms are pretty spacious. I stayed there. I was I was like, yeah, I had lots of room there. I know that in Europe, many of the hotels are smaller because the buildings are older. This is a refurbished building as well, but the rooms are really spacious in this hotel. 
This is the downstairs lounge and um, where you can eat. So on this tour, once we get off the ship and we travel to Leon, uh, the only meal included will be breakfast. So it's like a bed and breakfast deal. I ate in this restaurant in the hotel and the food was actually good. It actually was. I'm surprised. But there's plenty of places to eat in Paris once you get there. There's a restaurant right across the street. Because uh, where we are in Paris, you can basically find whatever you want. Now, an another important feature of this tour, one of the most important, is the Josephine Baker tour and the Black History tour in Paris. There's two separate tours. So there's a Josephine Baker tour that uh, takes us on the journey of her life and her impacts in Paris. And uh, then there's the uh, Black History Tour also in Paris, because many Harlem Renaissance writers, artists, performers move there for artistic freedom, uh, leaving the United States in favor of no segregation. And um, they were allowed to pursue their craft and they were treated like human beings. Uh, during this time, that was right around World War I. And then after that time, once jazz became a thing, then from then on, jazz became a thing. So there's also a, a large African presence. So there's an African village. So uh, I, that's on the tour as well. So um, this is going to be, Paris is a, a diverse and metropolitan city, but it's very walkable. And there's lots of places where you can eat and sample different foods. So uh, that's basically it. Um, I don't have anybody. Does anyone have any comments or questions? Let me know. I will check the comments. Or if you don't, put them in the post and then I will get back with you. But again, I put my email address in there. And the trip is open for booking. So I am going to put a link to it right now in this post. So if you do watch this on the replay, you will see that the trip is open for booking. So go right ahead. And there you have it. One second, let me grab that link and then you will have it. It was waitlisted. Now you have it. Here we go. Does anyone have any comments or questions? Just let me know. Raise your hand or put a, put your comments in the in the chat. So it is open for booking. And if you are interested in booking, make a river cruise consult an appointment, a river cruise consult. I'm going to put that in the chat as well, because this is a bucket list trip. So um, for bucket list trips, um, to make you feel more comfortable, I think uh, a river cruise consult should be a part of the process, and it is. So. Um, those of you on YouTube, when you view this, go ahead, make your appointment if you're interested, and get on my calendar. So I don't see any comments or questions from anyone. So this is Priscilla with Silla Travel, hoping that you have a great rest of your day, afternoon, and evening, wherever you are in the world watching, and whatever time it is. So um, just going to look one more time. And I don't see any comments or any questions. So I am going to sign off and hope that you have a great rest of your evening. Oh, one more thing. Remember, as always, live a dream. Bye-bye.